What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're back at one of my favorite filming spot locations. The sun is going down, but guess what? We keep the action coming and I got something all new for you. This is the all new 2023 Land Rover Defender. This one is the 130, which means we have three row capability in this SUV and it's also a first edition. But before we get into this all wheel drive mean machine, let's talk about what's going on here. Land Rover. They made a big announcement just a few years ago when they said they were bringing the Defender back to the United States. It had been a hot minute since we had the Defender here in our country, but you know what? They did it in a very interesting way. They kept this retro style, but with a lot of contemporary finishes, and then of course, the technology on the interior. Now, you could get your Defender two different ways when they first came out. The 90, which would be the shorter two-door, then there's the 110, and now we have the 130. And if you're wondering, well, what are these numbers? It's all about the length of the wheelbase of the vehicle. And this, being the 130, has the most room between the front wheels and the rear wheels. Of course, we're still gonna have our adaptive air suspension. We're gonna have a two-speed transfer case and that four by four technology. But what I wanna find out is, we now have another player. If you're looking for a three-row SUV, is this the better way to go over the long-standing Chevrolet Suburban Z71? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this great white Land Rover Defender and find out. Right off the bat, it's got the Defender style, and it's one of my favorites when it comes to that boxy, familiar look. Land Rover does a great job with their lighting. You're gonna, of course, get full LED daytime running lamps, turn signals, and headlights. We do have the washers to squirt water as you're going off-road, get some mud, you can wash it right off. Dropping it like it's hot. Speaking of hot, we got functional corner air intakes because we have heat exchangers lurking behind there to help cool all the inner bits. LED fog lamps, and then I'm liking the nice aluminum finish on the bottom portion of this first edition. Right now we're in the lower setting, but you could actually raise this to almost 11 inches of ground clearance. It, that means it could go through almost three feet of water. Can your Chevy Suburban do that? Why don't you go find out and let me know. But as we kind of come across the front, this is what I was telling you about. The Defender has such a strong, powerful look. The Defender name, I am gonna zonk because I don't like these stick-on letters, but it does look pretty crisp. You do have some aluminum trim in the center, fully functional, working our way down, functional, functional. There's your, look, look at how they hid the forward-facing camera in one of those little squares. That smart detail, that smart design, but very, very bold, just like the other Defenders right from the front. Now, when we rise back up, you're gonna have a bold hood, that nice bold bulge. I like the way, let me know what you think about how they made everything white where the windshield wipers are. It really gives it a unique look. Normally, remember, that's all blacked out. Also, the silver trim. Now, if you've ever wondered, Joe, why do they put this trim here? On the old school Defenders, this is metal, and it used to take up a larger part of the hood to where you could actually step on top and get to that cargo basket that you have or whatever you need to get to on top of your Defender. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? You're gonna get these massive, ginormous, five-spoke wheels. The Defender name stamped in there, 22-inch wheel, 275 on the width, 45 series sidewall, and like I said, we have that adaptive air ride suspension, raise and lower it at will. On the first edition, they brought that nice silver trim around the fender opening. I'm actually digging it. I'm glad that they did that rather than just keeping it white. On your standard Defender, this is usually flat black. Just a little tip. Coming down the side, what do we got going on here? Functional venting on the side, same design, flat black as is on the grill. We got the Defender name stamped in, and I dig what they do with the A-pillar. Most of it is painted, body color match, but then you have a little bit of black on the top, a little bit on the bottom, and look at how it just flows nicely into your side mirrors. 
that usual square shape, 360 degree cameras. Of course, we got turn singles built in and they are electric folding, which is really nice. On the lower portion, I'm really digging the two-tone. I think it fits it really well, gives it a nice clean look, especially with the wheels that we have, color match door handles, that familiar flat roof. And like I said, with this being a 130, never has it been this long before. If you've ever wondered what the heck is this square for, this is where you can get those side boxes and mount it onto the side of the vehicle, one on each side, gives it such a unique look. You're not gonna confuse this with a Suburban, with a Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer, or anything else, an Expedition, nothing like that. Working our way towards the rear, look at the massive glass. More glass than what's in that office building behind us. And then coming around the back end, it looks so good. I really love the way they do the lighting. Very, very modern, but has that touch of the classic side of things. We got our first edition badge. Of course, you're gonna have a nice spare carrier on the back, and I'll show you how we're gonna get it inside, but why don't we go ahead, we're not ready for cargo. Let's go ahead, drop it down first, and take a look at the aluminum on the rear bumper, just like up front. Nice, large, massive tow hooks. You can pull that Suburban right out, the exhaust, and you do have a tow hook. You could actually hook up to 8,700 pounds with this beast, but why don't we go ahead, it's now that time. Let's pop the hood and see what's powering our first edition long Defender. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hood struts underneath that hood. Not the sexiest of engine covers, but you know what? This isn't one of those vehicles that you're gonna take to Cars and Coffee and pop the hood. But what do we got going on? We got a three liter turbocharged straight six, pumping out 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a ZF eight speed automatic, zero to 60 in 6.3 seconds. The vehicle weighs 5,000, 570 pounds, and like I said, you could tow well over 8,000 pounds with this beast. And with the adaptive suspension, you lift it and raise it very easily. But you know what? It's about that time. Let's fire this up and see this big, long Defender hit the road. guys we're inside this 2023 defender 130 super long it reminds me of back when i was in elementary school you know us kids in the 80s we used to love the pencil fight and there was this one pencil called the big dipper that if you were able to buy one of those nobody messed with you that's how i feel about this defender 130 this is like the big dipper of suvs for off-roading Nobody's gonna mess with you, not even a Suburban. Now I know you're saying to yourself, well Joe, Big Dippers, how much do they cost? Well, Big Dippers back when I was a kid, they were about 89 cents, which was a lot of money back then. That was like a gallon of gasoline. But anyways, this Big Dipper, it's a little bit more expensive. MSRP starts at $79,000. This one goes all the way to a little over $100,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. I love the nice style that they bring with the exposed screws. You have the exterior color brought painted to the inside of the door panel and the two-tone is really nice with the beige off-white Meridian sound system and a very large door pocket, easily stack two 12-inch cold cut combos from Subway, nicely toasted. Now going from the door panel to the dash, you'll notice the nice soft touch material, the stitching, the wonderful Twinkie tray here. You could put about 24 Twinkies in that tray. You do have the ability to run things behind the infotainment system. And speaking of the infotainment system, you have that Pivi Pro 11 inch infotainment system. Nice, clean, very quick reacting, which is great. And then you could go into things like weight sensing. 
You could bring this in the water. It'll let you know how high that water goes. I love having that flexibility. Speaking of flexibility, check out our rear view cameras. Super clear on the resolution. The 360 cam, you could go off-road style. Actually have your off-road 4x4 displayed. Go back to on-road. Very easy to figure out. Very intuitive. And then we're right back where we started. You got all your AC controls, heated seats and ventilated seats. You make your adjustments. If you want to adjust your blower fan speed, you got that easily right there. This is going to control that ZF 8-speed automatic. And then you got storage underneath here for easy a bag of apples, a sack, a purse, a purse, a satchel, whatever you want to put down there, USB-C, USB-A, 12-volt, two cup holders. Here is your Land Rover key fob. All the buttons on the back. You do have a place for wireless charging. And then we lift this up. Look at this. I got a nice, cool beverage because we have a two-stage cooler in there that has ambient lighting. just as cold as when I took it out of the fridge at home. Flip that back, seats, the leather, everything is fantastic with the perforated material, the stitching, and of course you're gonna have full power assist for the passenger and full power assist for the driver and plenty of headroom. And then the cherry on top is a nice clear digital rear view mirror. But why don't you go ahead, come over to the business end, I wanna show you behind the wheel of this extra long Defender. All right, guys, business time, driver's side. You get three memory seat settings. I like the first edition sill plate, very classy, letting you know that you got something very unique and special. We have seats that will move 24 different ways from Sunday, easy to control. I'm six feet tall, I got plenty of headroom in here. Love the two-tone steering wheel. The white with the black leather, the stitching, the Defender name, nice thumb controls electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel. You even have a place for a Granny Smith apple, maybe a caramel apple. Mm. How about digital gauge display? Super large, very clear, all the graphics you want and really allows you to be able to kind of get all the information you need all at once. The one thing that seems to be missing in here is a head up display. Kind of confused why that's not there, but why don't we go ahead this is the first time I've ever said this. Let's get in the mid row of this Defender. All right, guys, time to get into the mid row. And I'm telling you, lots of space, especially with that flat roof. I love the way the panoramic glass comes very far back. Backs of the seats, a little bit of a combo deal. The leather, I'm not in love with the plastic, but uh, definitely a big zonk for the cargo nets. I'm telling you right now, if any of your passengers were chefs, and they brought their knife set, it would rip right through this. So just a little tip if you're gonna give a ride to any chefs that you know. I do like the way the AC controls match what's up front. Easy to adjust heated and ventilated seats in the mid row. What's weird is what the heck is going on here? Are these all dead buttons? Because that's a little confusing to me, but I do like the way they got the AC vents built in. Seats have plenty of room. Pull down this bad boy. Mmm. Charmin Soft on that actual armrest there. But you know what? We got one more to go. Time to get into that third row and see how it stacks up against the mighty Suburban. All right, guys, back seat time, the third row. Let's talk about what the heck is going on here. First of all, I have to zonk how hard it is to get in and out. I'm glad we weren't filming me doing it. It was not a sight to see. So it definitely is easier to get in and out of the back of the Suburban. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that the mid-row does slide and it does recline. And what I had to do is slide the seats all the way forward. As you can see by doing that, it gave me plenty of knee room, but if somebody was to get in and move it back, they would break my legs. But the good news is my knees are not in my mouth. And I like the fact that I have my own glass roof back here. It's like they didn't forget about me. It's like everybody in your vehicle is important, not just the people up front. It's nice to know that the peasants in the back get a little bit of the view of the sky instead of sitting in a cave back here. But those large rear quarter windows, we got the AC vents. I love the three stages of heated seats. And we even have these little places to kind of put your phone. See, watch, I'll even test it. I'm even gonna show you a 
Brady's Rides demo. Cell phone, there we go. Nicely stored out of the way. And I like the soft material on the armrest, but you know what? This thing is not just about hauling people, it's about hauling all your crap. Let's go ahead, let's get in that cargo area and see how much we could stuff back there in this Defender 130. All right, guys, time to get in that cargo area. You have that very convenient way of opening. The only problem is, is that if you are parallel parked, this is gonna be a problem opening up that rear door, but you got your Twinkie tray in the back for those emergency Twinkies. And I have the third row up. The reason why is because I wanted to show you how much room you have. 13.7 cubic feet of space. You'll notice on the side right here, you have the buttons to raise and lower the rear of the vehicle. And to put the seats down, the third row is manual. So you're just gonna pull, actually first, it's a two-step. You gotta push the buttons on the headrest to make them fold down. And you gotta really give it a good push. And then now you're just gonna pull up on these tabs there. There you have the third row up and you can see that it's not totally flat. So that is definitely a zonk not having it totally flat, but it does help you maximize your space. And if you put that mid row down, it will give you, of course, that 80 cubic feet of space. But you know what? It's large, it's in charge. Let's go on throttle, you and I together in this all new Defender 130. All right, guys, we're inside this 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. And what I love about this vehicle, it actually does not feel as long as it is when you're behind the wheel. I love getting to the infotainment system. They really mounted it nicely and it's pretty much integrated very, very clean. Yes, it's exposed a little bit, but still very, very close to the actual center stack area now having that nice large digital gauge display super clear easy to read and i don't know man there's just something about the interior on this thing where they bring that exterior color inside but then i really love all the finishes that neoprene finish looks good easy to keep clean and i'm telling you right now it's quiet in here even with those massive wheels and a little bit more off-road gear tire. It's a very smooth ride and it's very quiet. And obviously the smooth ride is gonna be down to that adaptive air ride suspension. You got your digital rear view mirror, which is a heaven sent in this vehicle and just really drives nicely. I love the way you have the unique shape of the side mirrors just being our standard square size. You got all of your safety features. And then these seats, super, super supportive. Now I wouldn't go this color combination personally, but when it comes down to the seats, they're heated, they're ventilated, and they're very comfortable. That's a big win, win, win. Steering wheel feels amazing, looks fantastic. And then once you figure out like what all the different buttons do it's really not that complicated there's actually been more complicated land rovers and definitely range rovers where certain buttons do about five different things um, which makes it a little bit more complicated but you got all your connectivity tons of storage and a very very unique vehicle that's for sure all right we're gonna go on throttle we're gonna pull it out go on throttle on throttle here we go Very, very interesting how fast this accelerates. Even though we don't got big V8 power in this particular one, which you can option this with a V8 if you wanted to, still got plenty of power, really gets it down to the ground effectively. And I don't know, it's just, it's a very, very fun vehicle to drive. You're definitely in something different. And the fact that this could go just about anywhere and not many people realize that makes it extra special but your mid-row passengers have plenty of room love having that panoramic sunroof up there it's easy to change lanes and stay within your lane because of how the dimensions are on the vehicle 
and the brakes feel superb. You know, driving this in a high traffic situation, I actually feel like it's a little easier to drive than the Suburban. Great sensitivity on the throttle, but here we go, on throttle. Telling you, very, very nice how, Z, how the ZF eight-speed automatic shifts. Yeah, you're getting some engine noise, but I think that's a good thing. You know, it's it's not too obnoxious. It doesn't sound like an aluminum tin can. Super smooth, but I'm telling you, these gauges are fan-freaking-tastic. You got your chill box, the nice refrigerated center console storage area for your Twinkies. And just really a, a, a joy to drive when it comes to your everyday things that you need to do. That's what's wonderful about it. All right, I wanna see how this uh, big old Land Rover handles. Here we go, on throttle. Drops down and we're off. I tell you, very, very composed for being a supersized three row SUV. And I really think that this thing is gonna outhandle the Suburban Z71. It just feels very composed. And I'm telling you, it's rock solid in here. That's another thing I'm really, really digging is just how rock solid it is. Obviously, going over any kind of bumps or ripped up road, you're not gonna feel it in this vehicle. You're just not. Oh, it's right, here we go. As you can see, it really holds the line well. Yes, you're gonna get tons of body roll, but this is a big lifted three row SUV. But just really showcases everything that Land Rover is good at. And I think from a styling standpoint and those that need three row flexibility, this could be the best one. But we're gonna come to a complete stop again and go on throttle if you're ready, I'm ready. On oh, throttle, here we go. <laughs> Love the way that nose just lifts for the sky. But hopefully this has been a good overall review for you with this Land Rover Defender 130. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys. It's been one heck of a time in this Land Rover Defender 130. Definitely wanna thank everybody at Land Rover USA for allowing us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Has Land Rover done it right by adding that extra row, by adding that extra length? Is this too over the top? Let me know down in that comment section. Let me know if you like it better than a Suburban with the Z71 package. Put it in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way, I'll hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. We got to give it up to Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. He's burning the midnight oil. He's working late tonight for us to make it happen. Show him some love. He's going to go get some Tijuana flats and chill out because he's chilling like a villain. But thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.